can't believe you two took that raving lunatic seriously. What do you think this is? <laughs> The last few months, the team has been working very hard to finalize our aerodynamic design. The target is to exceed 65 miles per hour. For an ultra low power vehicle like this, having the car be as low drag as possible makes it that much easier for us to go the speeds that we want. CFD, or computational fluid dynamics, is a way to simulate uh, what happens with airflow as it passes over an object of interest on a computer numerically. CFD is different from using a wind tunnel primarily due to the time savings that you get out of running uh, a slew of CFD simulations as opposed to testing the same kind of matrix of tests in a wind tunnel because you have to account for installing and uninstalling the wind tunnel model, actually making the wind tunnel model, and taking a lot of data, and all of that time builds up, whereas only in a matter of hours can you get the CFD solutions that tell you the same thing, and sometimes a lot more. I oversee the actual exterior shape of the Prove Lab vehicle and then I work with the aerodynamics team in iterating the car design to improve the aerodynamic performance. So we've been through about 40 variations of the car so far to reach the final exterior shape that we have now. And the way it works is we first make a shape of the car in SOLIDWORKS, and then we export that shape to ANSYS to run a CFD case. And based on the results, we go back and then we redraw it, make another iteration. What really drives the overall design of the car the fact of the matter is, is that we're not on a track competing against other cars in a race. We're battling the laws of physics. To do that, we've had to make a lot of design changes and a lot of design trade-offs. Uh, one example being how we've had to redesign our canopy uh, to make it more aerodynamic, even though we've had to sacrifice some of the area available to the solar array. We've predicted that at top speed, we're only going to see about 11 pounds of drag on the car. That's at least 10 times less than uh, the average F-150 driving around on the highway. My CAD skills have definitely improved a lot, considering that I have a very large challenge to focus on that is not only world record breaking, but it's pushing the envelope of a certain design. There's no project that I've ever had in the classroom that's of this scale where you're actually working on a full-size, record-breaking, you know, purely solar-powered vehicle. Like, just the sheer scale and the amount of details and CAD files you have to work with is incomparable. So the team's been working day and night to produce these gigantic foam blocks, which we're going to be shipping down to our build partner, Westerly Marine, in about a week. Now, those foam blocks are going to become the molds into which we'll lay the carbon fiber Make parts sure. of the shell. Now in about a month, we're going to bring back all those car parts here to Cal Poly and assemble the vehicle in this very bay. Now, during that entire time, we're going to be continuing to raise money since we still have some outstanding costs that we have to face if we want to make this project happen. But aside from that, assuming all of that gets done properly, we're going to take this car out to the Mojave Desert in June and claim that world record.